Okay, so to install that piece underneath this part, I have already riveted lots of spots outside of that red marked off area, which is where that plate will go underneath. I also removed the uprights, three in the bottom and the three and the three on top, as you can see there and there. So now getting this, getting this plate in here is a royal pain in the ass. So this part down here, I've separated it to where I'll be able to slide the bottom lip into there, both sides. This one over here does not need to be separated. And then, so this is the lip right here that's gonna slide underneath this. Now to get this in here, you had to remove the eyebrow. That was a good time to like wipe, wipe it all down. And just lay it over there on the side. So now, <laughs> yeah, have you seen this? This thing got crushed at some point. Uh, I guess I guess it came up, went this way, and then collapsed. But it's still a oh, great working shock. Need to change those out. Okay, so uh, getting this in here is quite the pain. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna get some black seam sealer, which is this one. SEM black seam sealer 29392 and I'm going to I'm going to fill this cavity right there all the way across to that side and then like by hand kind of like press it all in here and that's just gonna double up what I've already done on the other side because because in here uh, all along these edges and all along the top there's a full bead all the way around the opening then there's a bead around the out outer rim of everything and then that area in there is filled in and that area this area in here is filled in I just got to fill in a little gap right there but that's where we're at so let me go ahead and fill that gap up first. And then when that's done, I'm not gonna worry about grinding anything down here or anything, because this is going to be pressed in by the these alignment holes that are gonna go through through the brackets uh, here and, and on top. Because the threaded bolts, sorry, the threaded nuts are already welded on this lower panel from YRM, that's panel number 289. So, it's already water sealed, that no water splashing up inside the tub will come up inside the vehicle because of the sealing that there is around the, the hole that was cut out. I'll just go ahead and add a little bit more on the bottom, uh, and then just sandwich those two plates. Now, when I sandwich them in, I'm going to go ahead and bolt the, uh, the bracketry on the bottom, bolt the seat in. Get that all real nice and tight and once it's already nice and tight then i'll drill some extra holes and put larger and put larger longer rivets to sandwich all three plates together so it'll go through this outside sheet the actual metal of the car and this thick galvanized piece and uh that'll be that and then I'll be able to unscrew the seat, unscrew the bracketry on the bottom, put the carpet in, spray the carpet glued in, and then reassemble everything. And I'll be done with this side. And then I'll have to take a deep breath and a big glass of cognac to start this one. It is installed. See, this thing stays up there with a little strap. I gotta get the, the particular bolt that goes in there so that it stays there and that and automatically comes down when you bring the seats down. And then, uh, here we're here.
Good morning. So this side is done. So I'm gonna start working on this side. Take it easy today, it's a Saturday. So I have to mark out with a Sharpie here, the area that's gonna be covered by the underside support by the YRM uh, lower support panel uh, 289. Once I mark where that piece is going to be, then I'll know to drill more holes for rivets around the out outer perimeter of the area so that when this panel goes back in and gets glued in later this afternoon, I can go ahead and start putting rivets in the areas that is not going to be used by the under tub support so first thing is to mark it out where it's going to be I'm going to mark out an approximation of where the holes will be for the seat uh, and I learned a lot about doing this side number one is I should have just saved up money and bought a Puma but other than that uh, you know these will be gone from here these will be gone from here and I'll use these later on to put in the really large head rivets uh, to, to sandwich all the plates together. I ended up putting a total of uh, 14 of the large head rivets that came with the YRM conversion kit. Uh, and I'll do the same on this side. I think there's four across the top, four on this side, four on the forward side, and two in the middle. So uh, for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this out. Uh, then drill some more holes to match the rivets that I put on the other side uh, and then go on the outside and uh, remove these upper supports. Now I know from past experience I need to remove the three. So that one right there, this one and this one. And they do fold underneath. So once I take off these bottom pieces here, which I had a hell of a time doing on the other one, then I can push this piece down just enough to remove this piece where it bends underneath. So I'll be smart about it this time. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut these off from down here with a small Dremel and just saw them off and then it'll come off a lot easier on the top. So I think I'm gonna be a little bit more efficient with this side over here i'm saying i'm saying with the, this side as you know the passenger side here in the u.s uh so remove these got to remove these upper ones these upper ones are easy by comparison they're very easy uh, i don't have to remove this third one so i'll remove these two and then uh these three that one this one and this one once that's done and i cut these off from the bottom i'm going to be in a lot better place because uh, you also have to be careful because I'm going to be coming into this area over here with this tank. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get that panel in here. I'm going to start off with removing the uh, eyebrow. Uh, when I remove the eyebrow on the other side, let me show you what happened. I ended up getting some damage right there. So this one will have to be redone. But now I know how to take these off and put them back on. I'm going to take them back to Kim over at Select Auto Body in Pompano and have him just do it. He did these in situ, so he should be able to do the same thing if any damage were to occur on this one. I guess it's just, you know, it's, it's meant to be flexible, but not, not that flexible, and it might have gotten a little bit tweaked in the garage. So, all right, that's where we're at. See you in a minute. All right. Sorry for the noise in the background. Neighbors are doing their lawn. Remove the uprights. Here, ground down the little spot welds that uh, stayed there. Uh, up here, removed uh, only the portion that I needed to remove of the horizontal supports because on the other side, I removed the whole thing, but I realized I didn't have to. And since these are spot welded on this side, might as well leave this to add a little bit of extra support. Not that anyone's ever gonna sit or lay on this particular edge of it. The, the, you know, the chair gets braced over here. So, you know, did the same thing on this one and the same thing on this one. Now on this one, that has the lower rear door catch so it doesn't open up all the way. 
and so this plate was here that it's not on the other side fortunately this upright here I did not have to remove the entire thing on the other side although I did but on this one I can not do that so I can leave this part right here take off the, the, the upright and slice it off right there because uh, the, the support doesn't have to slide underneath this area here now cutting these off from the outside was so much easier than trying to chisel and hammer out the, uh, the stuff on the inside so I ch chiseled you know so I cut both of these off and then when I put a crowbar in here and I brought, brought it down it just finished popping them off here and here as well so now I have the space needed to be able to slide it under by taking out the eyebrow on the outside uh, it's gonna be a lot easier to put in the large panel and slide it into place just to start marking it now I'm gonna go on the other side and remove some of the uh, clicos that are still in on this plate on this part and drill and uh, put in some more clicos on the areas that are not gonna be uh, supported so I'll put them up here all right a little bit of an update this is the uh, bottom support system the part number 289 for YRM and in order for it to fit in here specifically with that fuel filler neck right there even with the eyebrow removed uh, found it necessary on the other side as well to cut this piece off now this piece was right there and so I made that little cut out so, so it was already you know it already had that little lip on this area so I cut this part off on both sides there you go and, that, and then I ground it off with a flapper so it makes it a little easier to bring it inside especially that I didn't take these pieces off because before on the other side I was able to put in the part and then flip it up and it went up high enough to slide underneath these ledges right there uh, so that's where we're at right now now I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and start measuring out once again that's part number 289 from YRM and this is gonna make things a little easier and I'll still be putting rivets through the top one two three four as well as four rivets here two rivets here and four rivets here and these are, those are really really large rivets that are going to be holding this plate onto the sandwiched piece uh, underneath the wheel well over there all right that's where we're at so far moving on all right i wiped everything down with alcohol uh the bottom piece is pretty much in place just separated a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and put in the seam sealer all the way around and then uh, put in uh, this plate, this piece. And everything is marked where I have to put the, the large rivets, the big ones, and then the regular ones. So, all right. Let's go to town on this sealant. All right, so this part has been glued in. I went ahead and uh, already put in some of the smaller 532 rivets in the areas where I had marked to put the 532s that was outside of the area where the bottom piece will be sandwiched in. Uh, these that are inside uh, the red line will be used, uh, will use the really large rivets because uh, overall I'm only using 14 of the large rivets. Uh, these puppies right here to uh, attach the inside panel with this interior panel sorry the outside panel with this interior panel with these large rivets and there's a few of the other ones that that go on the piece itself uh sealed that part uh all right so now i'm just going to let it sit for several hours before i uh, position that piece and make the holes and line up to make sure that the seats are both lined up Okay, so here we are underneath the fender with the support system. Uh, a few pointers that I found very helpful to do the passenger side after I had already done the driver's side and struggled on the driver's side. So over here, I cut these off with a small Dremel, the rivets that were coming down here on these supports. One there, one there, one there, and one there. Over here at the last one towards the back, I did not have to cut. Uh, I just had to remove the uh, vertical and bend it back until it broke off right here on this edge. Uh, then 
the nuts, the captive nuts that are on this that, that are on this support, uh, on this side, it's just a little bit into the lip here. And then on, on this side, it, it presses this down because it's, it's up in there. So you have to use a little crowbar to get in here and pull down so you can slide this in. So you can, so you can slide that all the way up in there. Make sure there's no clicos or rivets on the other side. It's going to prevent you from pressing this all the way against the inside of the tub on both sides. Once I, got, I had that done, I went ahead and went from the bottom and I drilled a hole straight through the center with a much smaller drill bit straight up. And I did the same thing. I, I, I do I wasn't able to do it here but once I, I was able to do a whole you know pushing this back a hole straight through here then when I was inside I was able to put just the bottom base up against the inside of the tub and that allowed me to line up where the holes would be and that small little hole, then I drilled it with a much bigger drill bit, a half inch drill bit, made the holes. And then I presented these brackets to it and marked where all the other holes were, drilled straight through, and now I was lined up. Uh, that helped out quite a bit. And that half inch hole is okay. It's much bigger than it has to be, but uh, it's still fine. You know, the, uh, the shoulders on these bolts that I bought, these are yellow zinc bolts that I bought over at Broward Bolt in Pompano Beach, uh, worked out perfect. So now I'm just in the process of putting in the, the large rivets. You know, I, I'm, I'm gonna be putting four on this side, four on the other, and uh, four across the top, and then two in the center between the two brackets. So let's, let's fold this forward. There. So excited about this, by the way. You can't tell, but I'm ecstatic that it's coming out so nice. The passenger seat is installed. Uh, the bottom bracketry is installed. The carpet is kind of there. Now, when you buy the OEM carpet, like I did from a member, uh, the OEM original Puma does not have these little steps towards the back, so the rug will not fit in perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a local uh, car upholsterer who are probably going to make some cuts here on the other side and then just put a new piece of rug same type of rug and put in a little you know a little bit of coping on the rug and it'll just lay right over and, and it'll look great and he'll be able to make all these little corners and curves and stuff like that uh now one thing that they don't show you in the uh, workshop i don't believe they do is uh those two holes right there are for the seat belt you know this seat belt needs a particular spot and it bolts right there now if you bought these seat belts seat belts from steven over at safari uh hp in in orlando or in winter park uh they come with a little l bracket that goes right there so the l bracket would be there and then a, another hole for a bolt that would secure to these okay so this is the one for the right hand side and let me show you what has to be done in order to fit these now this goes like that see those two holes down there those two holes match up with the following bolts here let me load this down okay. with these two bolts so uh, one of the bolts goes through this part of the NAS uh, rear bumper step hitch uh, and then the other one you can't get to because it's under here and you can't get a bolt in there not especially not the length that you actually need so since you need a really long bolt for here and a really long bolt for here so that it protrudes far enough through this side of the cross member so that let's see here again so that both of them go through and then you can put a nut on both of those sides and then up here and then up here, this presses up and 
one one hole I believe this is the way it is uh, this hole right here would get a, a securing bolt and then this larger hole is the bolt that goes for the actual seatbelt uh, little L bracket and these holes back here could be used for all kinds of stuff you can put a captive nut up on top or on the bottom you can drill through then put a bolt from the top and put a nut underneath now what I did notice is that these two of the larger rivets that I put in this one right here and this one right here will have to be dremeled off not a problem it's gonna have two more bolts here securing everything together and another one back here so I think that actually I think this is actually for that for a rivet but it's, I didn't put it in the right place uh, because as you can tell I don't know if I mentioned it in the last one there are these little divots right there and right there and I think that's where the YRM folks decided you should drill to put rivets through right there there's one right there right there same thing on the bottom but uh, so uh, we got this will be right there be right there now when you get the longer bolts you know you'll put get two nuts for each bolts because you'll put one nut here securing it fine to the cross member and then another nut and a washer on the outside of this bracket right here and it, it does have these two little standoffs right there so that it will help you because it'll rest right in here while you're securing it but that meant that I had to remove the NAS rear hitch step which was a pain in the ass uh, had di different size bolts over here different size bolts over here and then it had the security ones that go at the end of this which I don't think I had the right, uh, I, don't, I don't think I had the right uh, socket for it, but I found these, uh, uh, ex, you know, the external Torx socket set, and I used one of them, and it worked. So that's where we're at. I'm gonna go buy some bolts. It's this length. This was on one side. And this one was long enough to where I would have been able to secure that seatbelt support bracket uh, with another nut. So I'm going to take this to my local nut and bolt place uh, and get four of these and eight nuts and eight washers, and I should be in business. And then I'll and then when you're when you're assembling it together, you got to put the bottom bolt in first. Secure this part, present it, put the bottom bolt in. Once you have the bottom bolt in, you can tighten it down because you know it's not gonna go anywhere. It's just a bolt that's gonna be there uh, with a nut on the other end, not really securing anything, but then it's just holding on to the bolt, to the extra part of the bolt that sticks back out. That'll then get uh, this plate on there and you'll be able to put another securing nut on there. And that, that'll be for the uh, and that'll be for the, the bottom one on both sides so then once you go over here and put your new stainless super nice bolt in there and put a securing nut and washer on the other side you'll do the same thing over here on this side leave that in place and then you can go ahead and put back your NAS bar as normal because then the bolt that goes through here will go all the way through this end of the NAS, this end of the NAS bar, through the cross member, protrude long enough to be able to put securing nuts to to put that bracket. All right. Okay, so these are the seatbelt supports installed. I put the longer bolts that I got over at Broward Bolt right there. So I put the longer bolt, then a lock washer and a nut on the inside. And then the length that protrudes out here gets another large fender washer, lock nut, sorry, uh, lock washer and regular nut all fastened right there. And then at the top, I went ahead and uh, lined this up. I had to remove two of the large rivets that I had already put in the plate above it. 
but that's all right because this is holding it all together and it's also already a seam sealed in there with a panel bond so I drilled this hole and put in one bolt with a lock washer and a nut right there I could have also put another one in the back I might do that at a later time I don't have to worry about removing it in order to do that just drill it through and then follow through on the other side but there's too many wires right above that area that I didn't want to risk anything right now as it is when I was grinding away this stuff I chipped this and this was all of those uh, really cool trailer wires that were coming from the front all the way to the back including uh, the brake lines and so I cut a bunch of these and I'm gonna open this up uh, use a uh, non insulated uh, splicers and then seal them up with heat shrink tubing all individual and then wrap it all up again and I am gonna put the, the protector that comes all the way down here to protect all this area from any future harm uh, then up here this is another locator nut that that's welded on in place and I put one of these on I think is an M8 and then this is the bolt that comes with the little L bracket in the seatbelt kit that I bought from Safari HP thank you Steven uh, so this is all nice and secure I'm just gonna sp spray it all black uh, and it'll just kind of disappear you know you won't even be able to see it when you're looking in there and up here let me show you up here Here, here's the locator bolt to hold it in place and this is one of the little L brackets and that's the bolt that came with the seatbelt kit so now this piece this piece goes in the back and uh, I'm gonna have to find uh, the right nut because it did not come with any nuts uh, uh, at least I don't think it did I'll go I'll take a look and then uh, put it right there and it goes on the outside not on the inside so that it does not interfere when the seat locks back up and that's where we're at so here are the seats already installed uh, the seat belts working everything's nice here's a view from the back just plenty of space on either side if you install it properly here's a big wide angle of the finished stuff other uh, rear speakers are in rear trim is in it's looking really nice. It's a quite quite a difference. It's a pleasure to be in the back of the car now. It's really made for my kids at the end of the day. I did this whole conversion so that I can have both kids in the back looking out the side windows and enjoying their their trips with dad. And look at that. That's what it's all about.